We all have stories, stories that we tell ourselves about who we think we are, what makes us tick. And really it's the stories that we tell ourselves that make us behave in certain ways. And sometimes those ways are helpful and sometimes they're probably not. It's said there's a fine line between madness and genius. And growing up, I got a real sense of the vibration of that line through my elder sister. My elder sister is seven years my senior. And really, she was very nurturing at times growing up. Um, she was her that taught me how to ride a bike. And really, it was her that improved my reading or certainly spent time helping me to read well. She get me to repeat lines and recite lines, complex paragraphs, stuff out of Bambi, if you think Bambi's... A kid's book it is actually not it's very dark but my sister she'd come up with these incredible games these incredible inventive games and one of the games she created was called the changing game and it just started it started one day completely out of the blue and we were sitting on her bed and my sister began to blow air into her cheeks and made this sort of farting sound <laughs> like that and it wasn't funny um, because her games were deadly serious and there were various levels of intensity to my sister's games. You you could have uh, moderately intense, fucking intense, insanely intense. And that was it. That's your choice. Um, and anyway, my sister, she would, she would just disappear. Um, after, after the initial farting sound, she'd disappear and a stranger would come back in her place. Do you remember the TV programme, Mr. Ben, growing up? Well, for me growing up. Uh, and in it, it was a bit like that because he'd go off and become someone else but you'd get none of that upbeat music or sense of exotic costume or, or indeed the sense that everything was going to be okay it wasn't like that but anyway this person would would reappear and it would be someone completely different to my sister that different expression different posture different sound it'd be completely unlike her and if I was trying to say my sister's name she'd just say my sister's gone and that she was now this other person of course She'd be completely believable as this new person. She'd have a name, a history, stories that gave her a rich identity, all created from the depths of her psyche. And sometimes her characters were scary. That one character she had was a self-harmer and she'd sit on the bed stubbing cigarettes out onto her skin. Obviously, I should have hit the panic button. I should have stopped the game. But as a young child of eight or nine at the most, I was a captive audience and sometimes her characters would be happy. And there was one particular character she had who was French. And when my sister became this character, she'd completely transform. I mean, I mean, physically in front of my eyes, she'd transform from this appearing this overweight to being elegant. She'd radiate with this confidence. And when she was this character, she just, she just appeared totally and completely confident. And witnessing this transformation, was nothing short of miraculous. You know, I might as well be watching a, you know, watching a magic show. So it's no wonder to me that as a hypnotist, the use of parts and ego states holds a particular fascination and delight. And I think it's also why the 19th century novella, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, strikes me in so many ways. And also, I believe it's why it's inspired me to create a hypnotic protocol to effect powerful transformation. But... Unlike Jekyll, in case you don't know the story, he transforms into his alter ego Hyde, a fiend with apish fury who tramples over a child and goes on a murdering rampage. You can unlock within the depths of your own psyche something powerful, something powerfully good. Somebody powerfully confident. Someone who knows exactly what they want to do with the gift of this time you have on this earth. And somebody who knows how to go about doing it. I know Jekyll and Hyde is a very dark story, but you know what? You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be scared because unlike Dr. Jekyll, who loses the battle of control to the murdering Hyde for his psyche and has to disappear, you're going to come back. Only you're going to be more powerful and more bold than you've ever been before. So if you want to join me, in experiencing this hypnotic protocol, you're in luck because I'm going to be delivering this free to anyone in my Facebook group, The Life You Were Born to Lead. To join my group, just follow the link below and I can't wait to see you there.